Now, I worked with Selen, the curator of the show, to select the works. Basically, we have four different floors, and each floor is sort of a little group of works on its own, and it reflects a kind of mixture of the different things I'm working on at the moment. Um, but it's not exhaustive and it's not a retrospective, although there's one or two slightly older works, there's mainly new things, or at least for the last, there's nothing I think older than five years, I'm not sure. Usually what I do looks very different, but the themes tend to be continuous about our relationship to ourselves and to <coughs> our bodies and to the world and to nature and just explored in different ways. So I guess in that sense there's a continuity but there's a, they knew in that there are lots of things here that haven't been seen before. The sculpture The Origin of the World which is in the front of the um, show is a sculpture made from a shell. So I got a real shell. Well first of all I found a real shell and I was looking at it and playing with it I just thought, in a way, it's really interesting because it's a bit like the archaeology of sculpture. It's um, a beautiful, symmetrical form made by a tiny, brainless creature with no spinal column. So it sort of makes you think, does art, is art created from the will of the artist or do we discover art that's already in the world? And then I thought, how could I transform it into something else? Because obviously you always have to transform something. And I've been working with digital technology, so I scanned the shell with a 3D scanner and then in the biggest 3D printing machine in the world um, made it three meters big, printed it, it comes out in plastic. There's basically a tank of liquid with lasers on it and where the lasers meet the liquid it goes hard but a tiny amount. So it takes about three months for the thing to emerge out of the tank. And then after that I made a mould of it and cast it in bronze and polished the inside and left the outside not polished. So you have this thing of, it's a bit like a sculpture of time as well because the <coughs> outside the shell has this spiral on it, it's like the passing of time, it's the accretion of the things that the small creature left on to create the shell. It's like cutting a tree. And then the, the front of it is polished, so it's reflecting the present moment, so it's in the now. So it's in a way a sculpture of how the present becomes the past in a way. It's like a sculpture of time as well. So it's all these different things really. But I like things that are lots of different things, not just one idea. Well, I think technology is just another tool, it's just another way of making something, whether a paintbrush is technology, a chisel is technology. It's just that now, I mean, I think the most important new technology for me is the use of 3D scanning and 3D printing, and I think that that ha will have an effect on sculpture, equivalent to the effect of photography on painting at the beginning of the 21st century, of the 20th century. So it's kind of this, well we're standing in front of the bonsai tree and it's, you can't, you couldn't make this sculpture before. You, it's, it's a way of reproducing an object in three dimensions without A, destroying the original object or B, um, making a pastiche of it because everything is exactly as it is on the little one. And you also have this sense that it's a bit like biological um, reproduction because you're scanning the form in and it becomes a digital code and then that digital code like, is like DNA and then you feed that into another machine that creates the object. So it's like a technological version of biological reproduction. So I think it's very interesting to use these technologies but I never like to make something where you would never know this was made with that technology unless I tell you. I don't like work that tries to be modern by showing technology because technology is always the first thing to date. So it will never look, it'll look modern for a minute. I'm always interested in art history because I love art, so I'm always looking at art. And so <coughs> anything I make 
is made obviously for people now to come and see it, but also hopefully for people in 500 years to see it, for people who have never been born yet. So the great thing about art is you can communicate over time, over huge periods of time. So they're kind of like messages in the bottle in a way, an artwork. It's something you leak, send out into the world and then maybe the person who loves it most isn't born yet. So there's this whole, you know, that's looking forward but then looking back as well. It's interesting to make, there's a, you know, the bonsai is a still life really, isn't it? I mean, there's, so meat paintings are still lives, I mean, they're like a tiny corner of a, a kind of one of those Dutch still lives of butcher's stand or a tiny corner of a bacon or a soutine blown up. And I think that you can never reproduce the past, you can, but you can make things that fit into the tradition of the past in some way. I mean, I think what's interesting about bonsai, when I first saw the bonsai in the Chelsea Flower Show, I thought this is like a living sculpture in itself. It's this tree that should be five meters tall, but is tiny because it's been kept in this tiny bowl. So it's all about the human desire to control nature and about control. And then when you make it two and a half meters big, it's this image of control growing out of control. So in a way that maybe this is a little bit about our relationship to nature now. We're controlling it so much that it's sort of coming back in some way to get us. So there's that sense of that maybe. And also, I mean, you know, there's so many other things, you know, it's the tree in the Garden of Eden, it's, to, it's lots of, it's, many different mythical things to do with the trees as well. For instance, there's um, some tapestries on the third floor that are from a series I started about two years ago when the, there were riots in London and I painted a picture of the, one of the most famous images from those riots and made a tapestry which I lay on the floor like a carpet. So I like this idea of something that's supposed to be about warmth and home and comfort being having this image of disruption and change and discomfort and so then I continued every week it seemed there was a new riot or social change somewhere so it's an ongoing series and there's about five or six from that series upstairs as as carpets and in a way they're a bit like also flying carpets, you know, there's the transports of imagination and, and history and I like the way that nowadays history is made by people coming together, like the threads in the tapestry, not singular people like Alexander the Great or something deciding to do something. So this sense of the tapestry of the different threads when they come together they form an image seem to reflect quite well how social media and different ways have enabled people to come together to change things. So the sculpture self is uh, the ultimate self-portrait in that it's made of me as well as looking like me. So I made a mould of my head and then I went to the doctors for a year and took blood out a pint at a time and then when I have enough I pour it into the mould and freeze it and then that frozen head is in a special display case that enables it to be seen and to exist. But if you unplug it or if there's a power cut, it just becomes a pool of blood. So it's like, a, in a way it's like a self-portrait of anyone because it's a self-portrait of life in a way. It's something that exists, is, is dependent, is kind of on a life support. And if you unplug it, it disappears. <laughs>